Warming up is an integral part of your practice routine. Getting yourself acquainted with the instrument, moving your arms, your hands, your fingers, that prevents injury and it allows you to work on your technique a little bit before you get into your repertoire. It generally just makes practicing a lot more enjoyable. So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to form a good warm up, and I'm gonna show you what I do. So let's start with that. Now, this warm up routine that I do, I do every single day. And what I start with is tuning. So that means just tuning on open strings. And I do include that as part of my warm up, and I'll explain later in the lesson why I include that as part of my warm up. And then after that, I move on to a slow scale. And again, I'll go into more detail later on in this lesson, and I'll provide a PDF of my version of the slow scale for you. But the general idea is that I do one scale, one key a week, and I start with slow, uh, long tones, and then I gradually get faster as I go up and back down the scale. And then I move on to the shifting drill. You know these vomit exercises. <laughs> That drill. I do that because it just warms up the hands so well and it also gets my ears a little bit warmed up. Then after that, I move on to something noty. And what I mean by that is, is just getting my fingers moving quickly. So something like the four note progressive scale. Or the shiftless scales in thumb position. You just wanna get your hands moving, right? So my warm-up routine takes about 25 to 30 minutes to do. And depending on how long you have to practice every day, that might be a little bit too long for you. And that's okay. It's not how long you warm up. It's about hitting these key elements of a good warm-up. So what are the key elements of a good warm-up that you want to make sure you include? The first one is tuning or simple motions. So I mentioned in my warm-up that tuning is a big part of my warm-up routine. And I basically turn my tuning into long tones. So by long tones, I mean just very simple, slow movements back and forth. What I'm doing is I'm just getting my body moving here and I'm focusing on getting a big full sound with my bow. And tuning is a great time to do that because you're just focusing on tuning the pegs up at the top of your instrument and also you know you can focus on getting a big full sound because of that. So I really like to do that when I have my students come over. Um, it's a great way to just get the body moving. And then after that uh, the next key element is scales and arpeggios. So I mentioned what I do is my uh, slow scale and let's say I'm doing the key of F major that's the PDF that I'm going to include for you in under this lesson. Then what I do is I start with whole notes. So I'll put the metronome on usually 80, but you can do 60 as well and play essentially long tones. You want to go really slow here at the beginning and you want to put the metronome on as well as the drone on whatever key you're playing in to make sure that you're also working on intonation. So you go all the way up and all the way back down in this slow, um, think of them as whole notes, so four beats for each pitch, and then you go to half notes, and then quarters and eighths, and as fast as you can possibly go while still maintaining your left hand technique, your intonation, all of that. It's just a great way to slowly get yourself moving a little bit faster you're focusing on bow control, you're focusing on intonation, you're also focusing on velocity, so moving your hands faster, right? And then the next key element is shifting or intonation work. Now we covered that a little bit with our scales and arpeggios if you're also including those. Intonation work covers pretty much everything that we do other than uh, playing on open strings if we are already in tune, right? So with the shifting and intonation work, what I do is the shifting drills, these vomit exercises. Right? And you can do whatever you like. If you have another type of shifting drill that you like or some kind of uh, exercise that has you moving up and down the instrument, then do that. 
I love the shifting drills. I love the vomit exercises because it's the best way to just get my fingers moving. I don't know what it is about those, but my fingers are always warmed up when I finish those. So what I would recommend, put the drone on. Uh, you don't need a metronome for those. Uh, and do one octave of your shifting drills up and down. And I promise you'll be warmed up after that. And then the final element is something to do with velocity, moving your fingers, something noty. Remember I said that in my uh, warm-up routine where I play the four note progressive scales, right? Or the shiftless scales in thumb position, some kind of drill or exercise that has your fingers moving up and down the instrument and you're able to move faster. Now, you can also use an excerpt from your music. So if you're working on, say, Mozart Symphony 35, you can do an excerpt from that. That would be a great time to work on um, getting your fingers moving faster when um, you know you have to practice that anyway. You can sort of overlap your technique work with your repertoire. And so those are the four different elements of your warm-up routine. And what I would suggest is to come up with three or four of them based on different exercises that you know you need to work on, you know that are good for you, you know you enjoy, and different spots maybe in your music that you struggle with that can be used as velocity exercises or even intonation exercises. And post a few of them in the study group. It would re be really helpful for people that maybe struggle building their own warm-up routine and we can all learn from them and maybe give you feedback on where you can cut back on certain areas and where you can add for other uh, warm-up exercises. <laughs>